Okay, uh, could everybody take a seat, please? Uh, we're very happy to uh, welcome Tony Chan, our next speaker, who's uh, an, a developer advocate um, at, and, uh, at Google. Uh, he, he's a developer advocate for Android and for several other uh, Google products as well, like Google Checkout and Google Apps. Uh, right now, he's more focused on uh, Android uh, for the Asia-Pacific region. Uh, today, he's going to share with us um, an open accessory development kit uh, for, for Android, um, which is basically a development kit that connects the Android devices to um, other external uh, USB uh, hardware. So let's uh, welcome Tony. Uh, hello, everyone. Can you hear me fine? Loud and clear? All right, great. Um, today I'm going to talk a little, um, about open accessory APIs and, uh, and the ATK. So a lot of people actually confuse about ATK with uh, uh, the Android development. Um, it's actually not Android development kit. It's actually as accessory develop, developer kit. So um, just want to clarify that a little bit. So um, the agenda for today, um, I'm going to first talk a little bit about uh, some USB basics, because this API is based on the USB protocol. And after that, I will um, give you a quick demo on the, the, uh, the ATK itself. And, um, and then after that, uh, we will go over the, the, accessory, uh, the accessory APIs a little bit. And finally, uh, I will go, I'm going to show you another more interesting demo, uh, applying the, the ATK, using the ATK to build a, a small kind of robotic arm a little bit. So, and if we have uh, some time left, uh, we'll, uh, we'll go for the Q&A, all right? So, some USB basic. So, all right. So it's kind of kind of weird. Um, it's not showing up correctly. This slide for some reason. Let me. Okay, so uh, basically USB is an asymmetric protocol, and uh, so in, in the USB bus there is a host, so the host actually controls the entire bus, and it also keeps track of all the attached device, and, uh, and also uh, you, can, you can also hook uh, hubs into uh, the USB bus. And it al it's always the host to initiate the communication with other devices, and uh, also, the host provide power to all other devices. Um, for devices, it will communicate with the host through some uh, with something called endpoints. Uh, we will go uh, a little bit detail about what endpoint is later on. And uh, for device, also it has to describe its capability through um, to the host uh, during the email. Uh, uh, the enumeration process. So uh, the device can also implement uh, some standard functions or uh, some vendor-specific function. And of course, like the device uh, uh, drawing power from the host. So there are uh, something called USB descriptors. Uh, it's used for a device to describe itself, the capability to the host uh, during the, uh, the enumeration process. So there are four major descriptors. Uh, there's a device descriptor, a configuration descriptor, uh, an interface descriptor, and also an endpoint descriptor. Um, for, this, uh, for a device descriptor, um, it provides a high-level uh, description of what the device is doing. 
Um, and also, um, it has a vendor ID, a product ID. So the vendor ID is uh, assigned by USB.org. And the product ID is assigned by the vendor itself. So it also gives some additional information like what classes of device or subclasses and what kind of protocol uh, this device is using. Um, it also, also, also has some manufacturer, manufacturer information, product information, and serial numbers uh, follow, uh, with, with the, comes with the device. And for this dis uh, device descriptor, uh, in, in the Open Accessory API, we have a class actually mapped to this, this uh, device descriptor, and it's called USB device. So the next descriptor is the configuration descriptor. So, the, so a de usually a device can have multiple configuration, but in, in Android case, uh, an Android device can only have one descriptor. So it, it has a configuration number, a list of interfaces, what kind of uh, functionality the, uh, the device can do, and also the, the maximum power usage of that device. Um, and in this case, uh, we have a corresponding class in the API called USB device to map this uh, div uh, descriptor. Okay, so uh, another descriptor is the device, um, uh, okay, I think, is the interface descriptor. So, so in interface is, is specifying a specific function, uh, what, did, what the device can do. So again, it has a, a, num uh, a, a specific interface number and uh, the class and the subclass and the protocol ID as well. And also for this interface, like what are the endpoints uh, the, 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 um, the USB bus uh, has to use to communicate between the host and the, and the device. A um, couple examples of uh, what Android uh, interface uh, we, we, we have. Um, so one of them is the USB mass storage um, interface. Um, so when you connect your Android phone to the computer, so you will see um, so a, um, a dialog pop up saying, um, asking you whether you want to um, enable the mass storage device to, so to look at the content uh, storing in your, um, in your Android phone. Uh, another interface we have is uh, ADB. So, so I'm, I assume you guys use ADB a lot for uh, t uh, looking at the phone detail and when you do like uh, debugging or debug uh, install or uninstall application. So, so these two are examples of uh, Android uh, interface uh, we, we have uh, built, built in in the Android device. And again, there is a corresponding class in, uh, in our API map to this descriptor and it's, and it's the USB interface class. So the last descriptor I want to talk about is the endpoint descriptor. So endpoints are channels for sending and receiving data. Um, so you have to specify an address so the USB um, know actually which endpoints you are talking to. Uh, there are also like four types of endpoints. So and they are control, bulk, interrupt, and uh, iso isochronous. So um, we in, in the accessory API, we currently uh, support the the first three types, and uh, asynchronous is not currently supported. So uh, for endpoint, you can also you, you also need to specify the the direction. So um, some endpoints you can uh, have bi bidirectional like communication, and some of them you you can, you can have only unidirection. So so out is the is basically the host talking to the device is uh, in that direction, and in is the device talking to the host. Um, another piece of information is the maximum packet size you, uh, you specify uh, for this endpoint uh, to do the communication. So again, we have another class mapping to this uh, descriptor, and it's the USB endpoint class. So let's talk a little bit uh, more detail about these endpoints. So the control endpoint basically is 
M.0 in the in the USB bus, and uh, it's used for uh, the uh, the en uh, the enumeration process. Um, so so the enumeration is basically um, the whole going through the list uh, the list of actually attached the device and find out what they uh, what kind of device they are, and uh, so and and also the control endpoint will also tell. Um, um, the host will also send the request and ask for like what kind of like uh, vendor or what classes of device uh, uh, currently is connecting to to the host. Uh, the control endpoint is initiated by the host and is bi bidirectional. So um, for the bulk, bulk type of endpoints uh, is the is the generic purpose for the I, uh, usual I/O. So you uh, for all the data communication usually we use the uh, the bulk endpoint. Um, so, and interrupt is uh, kind of like a small message. Uh, we usually use that to uh, um, to do like asynchronous uh, short message or event notification. Um, so, as uh, as I mentioned before, isochronous is not like currently support. So, usually uh, in USB, we we use this type to uh, sending like time critical like. Uh, Info, uh, messages. So, uh, what is open accessory? So, open accessory is uh, is basically the uh, USB host device that can communicate with uh, with any any Android devices. So, a lot of people may ask, like, why um, you in 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 this case, like open accessory, usually when you connect something, uh, for example, connect a keyboard to uh, to a computer, so the keyboard is is actually not is is a is a device, right? It's not the host. But in this case, uh, in in Android, a lot of some open accessory accessory are actually the host, and the Android phone is uh, is is the device itself. So, because a lot of the Android phones these days are uh, uh, does not support like the host mode, and that's why um, we kind of designed um, this open accessory uh, framework to to have the the connected device to become the host. So, but of course, like in uh, in Android three point or later, so tablets is actually. Uh, support supports like the host mode, so and you can use like uh, the tablet uh, as a host to con uh, to control uh, multiple devices. But at this at this time, for phones, um, you can only connect to. Uh, so even though the uh, the accessory itself is the host, you can only connect have one connection, which is actually connecting to the phone. Um, an open accessory has also need to like supply um, a five volt power to the Android phone, uh, 500 milliamps, and it uses uh, an open Android accessory protocol for the communication. So uh, I would go over uh, some detail of how, what the com uh, the protocol is like um, in 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 the future slides. And um, so again, like this communication is bidirectional. So um, the accessory can send data to the to the phone, and at the same time, the phone can also send data back to the accessory. So uh, um, when I demo the ATK, you you will see like uh, an example like what that means, like the bidirectional communication. So this is the. Uh, two pictures of the uh, the ADK. Um, so, if you see uh, the live uh, projector, is actually only have the second half of the the um, um, the ADK, right? It's actually is it, it has the whole thing there. Um, it, it the f the Google Shield is kind of like uh, putting on top of the. The Android accessory board, which is uh, the Arduino Mega 2, uh, 2560, 
Um, so we have a shield and just sit right on top of the, the, um, the accessory board itself. Um, the board uh, also has a host control, uh, USB host controller. Uh, it's a Maxim Max 3421E. Uh, so basically, uh, if you are familiar with Arduino and, and all the tools, you can reuse all the tools uh, provided by uh, Arduino. So, um, the, so the Google Shield, uh, what, what, what uh, that, ha um, the Google Shield has um, a lot of like interesting like uh, hardware you can play with. So, so it comes with like three uh, RGB LEDs. Uh, there are four buttons. Three of them are mechanical, and one of them is capacitance. So I, 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 will, I will do a quick demo later. Um, it also has three servo channels and two relays, and uh, there's a joystick there, that little like circle thing, um, right, right here. This is the, um, this is this is the joystick, and there's a button too. You can press it. You can press down, um, and it also comes with uh, a light sensor, and uh, and a temperature sensor. So uh, I think this is the light sensor and. The other one's the temperature sensor. So let's jump to the demo. There's no, shouldn't, they shouldn't record the, oh, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't sign. Oh. Oh. Sorry about that. Okay, so let's jump to the demo. always the scary part, always doesn't work demo when you are giving a talk to 100 people. Um, So now I'm connecting my um, Nexus S to to the ADK, and uh, and there is a demo kit comes with the the board. Um, so there are two tabs. One is for input and one is for output. So for the, in the input tab is show is currently showing the temperature from the from the temperature sensor, and also uh, is also showing the Intensity, uh, the light intensity, so the eighty percent something is from the from the light sensor. So if I pr if I press the the button, you can see like um, those buttons light up, and this little Android here is the capacitive buttons. So so based on the capa capacitance of myself, it will it will uh, trigger the the button. And also, like this is the joystick. And if I press on it, it turns into blue, the dot. So basically, I'm clicking the button. So this is the in. Uh, so it's the input data from um, from the device to uh, to the to the to to the to the phone. So and there is also uh, another tab. Currently, it is showing. Um, the three slides is connecting to the to the servo uh, to the servo motor um, channels, and um, also there's uh, these two buttons are turning on and off the the relays, 
and this slider is uh, is mapping to the LED buttons. So, so I can let me like click a purple. So you get the you get the idea, right? All right. So let's. It's a little distracting. Let me turn this. So for installation, so uh, I as, so there, are, there are, so we have like some information in the in the Android website. Uh, there are a couple actually company on online uh, store is selling this ADK. Um, it's, it's pretty uh, not 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 very cheap, but um, um, but once you have the ADK, you can follow some in basic instruction in our in our website. And um, so there, I, I just highlight a few major steps. So basically, you have to install the Arduino software. Um, it comes with an IDE, so you can write uh, C code. Um, so Ardu Arduino itself, the, um, the development language is C. Um, but if you, if you are developing, um, but the demo kit um, talking to the Arduino is is, is basically the Android application, and so that's done in Java. Uh, Java. And um, so the board itself obviously has to have some kind of fir uh, firmware, uh, which is in this case the ADK has a, has a, has a firmware that comes with it, so you can just uh, flash the, the ADK board with the, with the, with the firmware, and, and then you can also um, if you are using the capacitance button, so you have to download another library from, uh, uh, it, it, the links is included in the documentation as well, something called CapSense, and, and put all these open necessary um, libraries. Um, so I haven't finished this bullet. So you have to copy the necessary li libraries to, to your uh, Arduino uh, um, installation location. So after, after all this, uh, you go to Eclipse, and uh, in one of the API demos, you can uh, create a new project and just uh, set, the, uh, try the, the demo kit uh, sample application, and you will see this, like, um, the, the demo kit I just showed you. So, um, so after the demo, I want to talk a little bit about the, the, uh, the open accessory the protocol. So remember we talked about there's a special protocol that as the open accessory has to, um, has to talk to the, the Android device. Um, so basically, when you, when you connect um, the ATK board to, to your phone, um, some kind of like uh, handshake is happening. So the first thing the, um, the bot is doing is uh, to send the get protocol command to, the, um, uh, to get the accessory protocol version. So currently there's only one version, which is version one. Um, so if it returns anything other than one, that means like the device doesn't support um, open accessory. So after that, like if you receive one, uh, so that means like um, the connected device support open accessory, and then the next things um, the bot will send is the uh, sending all the manufacturer manufacturer information, what kind of model um, this ADK. Um, so it could be other devices, it could be some other uh, um, uh, accessory, right? It's other than the ADK board, so. So all these like description, version, zero number, and and URI. So the URI is used when uh, to tell like if the phone does not have the, um, the application to.